Okay, so starting this next turn in Civ, I wanted to, uh, I ran through the collect taxation, obviously. Everybody's collecting money now, some people more than the others, but no biggie there. Uh, population expansion. The census, uh, I, I kind of am destructive to that as I'm moving. I pulled the counters off so that I can see what's left. But this is after movement now. There were people who probably should have built boats. Africa, most significantly among them, they're going to lose a person because they didn't. They could have shifted someone to here and then, you know, maybe gone into some kind of expedition in the Aegean. Of course, something like that costs you three people instead of one to send one out. So, eh, they're only losing one here and they'll be able to build a city and that'll be kind of their block because they're focusing their main effort against the Egyptians. And you know, it kind of makes sense because the Italians and Thracians are, are involved in their big war. Crete and Assyria have more or less come to a peace here because Crete moved last. Assyria would have had to really violate uh, the Crete in order to gain control of those areas. In fact, Assyria moved early everywhere. They made an offer to Egypt essentially by building a city here. Egypt agreed by building their own city, so now we have a wall there. Nobody can pass that easily. And given the terrain, it's tough to break that wall. Now this is not great news for Egypt. Egypt would have hoped to have grabbed more of the Near East, and they're under pressure from Africa. This is why the Africans push in here, and I haven't done the conflicts yet, and the Egyptians have moved in here to kill these guys off, trying to maintain some sort of balance here. And it means they only build one city. And likewise, Babylon's looking at an expansion into Assyrian uh, claimed territory. They have a decent number of cities right now and aren't really threatened, so this is probably a mistake on their part. They probably should have considered building two cities. And, uh, well, that would make it easier for them to break this hump. I think as we're going to see it, it, both Egypt and Babylon are going to fall behind, and they should have done that for population, if that's the case. Anyway, let's uh, resolve some of the conflicts. Uh, you can see Italy and Thrace, that, what a mess that is, by the way. I mean, they're just interpenetrated. It looks like, because Italy went last, they're kind of booting Thrace into all the high population areas. Uh, which is fine, except there's no city spaces there, so it's going to cost a lot more population to grow. I think Thrace is in a little bit of trouble right now. We'll see. Um, as we can see, the Romans win that battle. And I'll just do the rest of them everywhere. The Romans basically got to choose where they wanted to win. This was the only exception. They had to lose a piece, so they decided to do a trade-off there. So, as we're handing out trade cards, we're on Babylon's turn. And they've got three cities, but one of the cards, the two card, is going to come up as a calamity. And it's a red-backed calamity, so it gets hit right on them. Volcanic eruption or earthquake? Well, they don't happen to sit on any volcanoes, which means they have an earthquake. And damned if I remember. Um, so one of his cities will have to be reduced due to the earthquake uh, to its population value. This is kind of painful for him. Um, so if he drops this, it'll go down to three people. And if there was an adjacent city, he could also demand that the player who owns that city reduce his city as well. This is just a, a, a negative for, uh, for Babylon, but that's okay. Um, and Egypt also gets a negative. They don't get a two trade card. And this is one of the other pains in playing without the additional... Uh, expansion trade cards, which may actually make it harder to make that barrier, is that uh, you end up quite often short a little earlier. These decks are smaller, so once there are a decent number of players up at a certain level, it becomes tougher to get uh, the number. The, the, 
all your trade cards. I, you always end up getting misses, uh, especially at the low end or whatever, if people are holding them. The fact that people can hold less cards, though, uh, at only six, now granted in the advanced game some people can't hold that many, but uh, or in the expanded game. But the fact that you can hold less cards means that, uh, oops, there's an extra guy who didn't live. Um, it means that you, uh, you're going to be recycling them into the deck. You must spend or do something. So we'll kind of see what the effect of this is. It's been a long time since I played it all, and I made my decision that I think the advanced game, the expanded cards caused a problem fairly late in my, my period of playing this, actually, long after I had stopped playing it obsessively. And I think I've only played it a couple of times back in the original. All right. Um... So, now we come to the tricky part for me, which is actually doing the trading. Because I'm doing this solitaire, it's kind of tough to do the trading. What I usually do is make an offer. What I do is I randomly select a person, and he looks for a deal. And if he finds one amongst people, he makes an offer, and I kind of randomize whether or not it's accepted, unless it's so good for both players. All right. Well, I'm going to look at people and see if they can deal, even. Well, no one's really got enough cards uh, that, are fair, that they have to deal. And there's no real push to deal in terms of getting across that barrier. Collecting a little bit more and seeing if you can make a little bit more all at once seems like a reasonable thing. Now, the problem here is Egypt and Babylon, minimum, have to pull 75 points to get their three colors. That's going to be real tough. If you look at what's out there right now, the biggest thing is salt. That would be getting five salt. Right now, each of them has one. They just reached three. Uh, it's definitely not possible right now. I don't think that they're going to make it on the next phase. Now, they don't have to make... All of their money off trade cards, of course, but there isn't much towards that 75 here, so I think they're both going to end up being pushed back a space, which means they should have probably taken a delay earlier. Um, it's all, almost always bad to build your cities as quickly as possible. Okay, and... Well, after all the trade card type stuff, including purchasing, what we go to is the Calamities, and we have this one. Now this is bad for whoever has the least cities because nobody turned anything in and it's sitting here. Uh, let's give them the calamity to begin with. He wants to free these up I guess. But that's gonna make his life much much more difficult as well because he's behind a city now. Um, so this is one of the weird things about this game, because there's no reshuffling, because cards don't necessarily go back in the deck, etc. These suckers just sit there on the top of the deck. And uh, now it's kind of this race. Africa feels pretty safe, but Italy does not. They're in a race to build more cities than, say, Thrace, who's also at two. Or, well, Babylon, who's at two as well. So... It almost becomes a, oh, I really don't want this to happen um, aspect to some of these calamities, which I find kind of an interesting dynamic. All right. Briefly, let's just look at the advances here. I think everybody makes it. Everyone has at least two cities at this point, so it's no problem. But now we hit the warning point. And this is Egypt and Bap. They have to get their three colors, and it's going to be tough. Uh, with this card set. With the new card set, sometimes it's a little easier. Uh, and other people are really unlikely to stop with the expanded cards. Alright. Okay, this is a big turn for uh, <coughs> Egypt and Babylon. They have to get their three colors here. And they haven't bought any advances yet. So this is going to be kind of tricky for them. 
they pretty much are forced to trade, which may mean that they have to give slightly better deals to other people. Of course, if they can't make that limit, which is quite possible, there's no reason to make the trades, uh, except that their hands are getting too big. So and they may not be quite as pressured in terms of trades as you think they might be, just because I've kind of screwed up and maybe not gotten them into as good a position as they normally would be. This is often a problem for Egypt and Babylon with whichever trade card set you're using. Uh, it's tough because other people don't have the same pressure to build and, and to make trades, so they quite often get left behind at this level um, if they didn't take the getting left behind at the previous level. It often balances out, but I, I think it may be better to take the skip and, and get the bigger growth, which I've stated a few times. Here's our uh, census data. And one thing that's important is relative position. So having a lot of troops is bad in the sense that you go early, but Thrace has the second most troops, but they go after the person they're worried about, which is the Italians. So they've kind of engineered a good situation for themselves. Uh, likewise, Crete gets to go after the Assyrians and after everyone else. It doesn't matter that Egypt goes after them, um, but they don't have a lot of pieces, so that's a little off. We've got some boats being built here. The Italians, with a thought towards moving more into uh, Greece and building some cities down there. Ahistorical, this game has a tendency to create some pretty ahistorical stuff, and these cultures stop making a lot of sense once civil wars and stuff place them all over the place. Just, there's a lot of weirdness and, and you kind of lose your image of, yeah, this game is well linked to history. It feels like it early on, but it doesn't really end up that way. Although, historically, there were these break off little pieces like this, you know, like um, you have the Romanians who came from a Latin background but are in a very strange place. Not at this earliest stage though. But the Hittites, for example, came from a very, uh, they, they're an Indo-European language group and ended up settling down here competing with the major Middle Eastern powers, which is kind of weird. They would be the Asians in this game, I guess. Uh, let's see. So anyway, we have an Italian boat here. Thrace built a boat with an intention of kind of settling in the Isles. The Cretans had to build a boat. They're looking at maybe Cyprus or maybe the Isles or something uh, to expand to. Basically, they just need to get some of their excess population out of there after they build this city. And they're going to build a city on Crete as well. Uh, they may actually be able to build both Cretan cities. One, two, three, four. Yeah, they actually could. That might be their most advantageous. It weakens their spreading, though. And they have a long time before they have to hit that three colors. So they may not have a real desire to build... Um, to build too many cities right away, in, unless other avenues are closed to them. Uh, who else? I think that's it for boats. And now we're going to move on to the movement and conflict, and I'll, I'll come back after that, probably. Well, let's take a little look at the pre-conflict situation. First of all, Crete got itself in a situation, uh, maybe if it had bought the boat using treasury, it would have been in better shape. In fact, nobody used treasury to buy boats. Uh, I think that was probably a mistake on Crete's hands. Maybe less so for Rome or Thrace. They had real population problems overall. Uh, but it meant that they couldn't build an extra city. I don't know if they would have had that extra city available if they had built the boat. But it did also mean since they didn't build this city, they're pressing out against the Assyrians, who kind of withdrew from this area. Now they're going to lose this whole northern little piece of land because they're building a city here, which creates that wall of cities effect, um, giving Crete a kind of powerful little land enclave that they sometimes have trouble uh, creating because they're spread out among the islands and have a lot of difficulty kind of massing manpower anywhere without using navies. Uh, I don't know how much this masses here because this is going to become a city eventually and break apart whatever uh, synergy they have there. 
they slid forward to here and then back so that next turn maybe they can use that boat again preferably paying from treasury at this point uh, Egypt is under some serious strain from the Africans where they couldn't build as many cities as they would like to you see Babylon's building two of course they're a city behind Egypt could only afford one city because of these attacks and I'll take care of these just to kind of show you where this is going I think this is one of the more interesting this is okay here we have the three to two advantage which means it's going to be removed that way uh, it's just to kind of show you there's an African uh, a, a choco elephant over there they look yummy to me I'm sorry uh, over here Thrace really got to put the squeeze on the Italians. You'll see how that uh, turns out in a little bit. We also have Babylon kind of inserting itself into the Assyrian territories, more to provide them with a shield of some sort, because they're afraid they're going to lose these kind of areas in the borderland because they had to build uh, further back. But they also don't want to completely cut off their own expansion. It's a troubling situation for them. All right, well, we'll see mainly how the Thracian-Italian uh, fights come out, along with uh, the cities will be in place as well. And just from placement of the uh, cards, and this was pretty much deterministic because Thrace only built three cities, they ended up getting the disaster that was sitting on the top. But nobody got any ones and twos, because those have all been dealt out already. Uh, when we go above Thrace, who didn't get much, he got a salt along with that. Crete, uh, Babylon, both got a three and a four card. Egypt, though, got just a four card, a grain, because they uh, picked up a famine. Then moving further out, Africa and Italy got uh, fours and fives. And Assyria got a four through seven. A lot of cities there. Can I support all these? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yes, I can. Uh, Assyria can do this. And really, this is the Assyria or Asia. If only one of them is in the game, usually they end up very, very powerful at this point, just in terms of that early big area, a lot of city richness that's reachable. If they're both in, they fight over it. And that makes it uglier for them. And it makes it more like the situation you see between Thrace and Italy. The problem is, uh, it's very unnatural for both of them to be in the game, just as it would be unnatural for all three of these to be in the game uh, at the same time in a seven-player game. Um, all right, well, it's time to start the trading. And for solo play... I think I've kind of explained this. I roll a die to see who gets to trade first. And I'll start here and go around. And that's eight, that's no good. Six, I'll start with the Assyrians and see if they can find a trade with someone else. They're gonna try to make an offer uh, in terms of, hey, this is what I want. If it doesn't work, then I pass on and, and go to the next person. And I'll just go in an order from there, um, trying to establish trades. It basically, best idea of a trade in my mind, and it either works out or it doesn't. You know, somebody either takes the trade bait or they don't. Early in the game here, it's pretty likely that people will take even the early trades. Well, let me just open up with how this is. Oh, we have the famine, which is kind of a danger because people might want pottery and to hold grain. But anyway, the Assyrians have said, I've got grain worth seven in three cards and I want cloth, and I'm just going through every pile to see if anybody's got cloth, and some people will, and wants grain, and chances are they will take this deal, usually a 50-50, uh, I roll on it, because yeah, it's not obviously to their advantage, they're giving away the better commodity for the lesser one, but there's more grain out there, so if they want to get out early, and in a way, Assyria probably actually wants to get out earlier than some of these. They'll take it. We'll see. 
And the die rolls said Italy would accept that they have cloth worth seven. Now Africa tried to push a, hey, can you push that up a dollar? Because you see, they have a pair of salt and a pair of grain. So if they could have gotten a grain and a salt off of the Assyrians, they would have gotten an extra pair that they didn't expect. That didn't work out. What we've got is this trade. And you're not showing these when you're actually playing. You're just saying, oh, I got three cards worth seven, including cloth. Oh, I got three cards worth seven, including grain. I'll make you the trade. They agreed to do so. But I'm not going to allow Assyria to get the next trade. I've got to move on in order to try to simulate the dynamics of a real game where there's real trading going on and people are kind of pairing off and saying, hey, what about this? What about that? Uh, there's often a lot of confusion, well, chaos in the game while the trading is happening. It usually settles down pretty quickly. Uh, except there's always, you know, one person in the game, oh, I don't know if I want to do that, I don't know. And he's just left there. And, and all the good trades kind of pass him by, and then, then finally he takes something at the end, you know, <laughs> but uh, he usually ends up not getting the best sets consistently because he's being too slow and not grabbing those early deals that you can kind of snowball into better deals later. Okay, well, we got our first burn in the game. Three cards worth 10, including papyrus, makes it sound like two papyrus and ochre and hides. Four, three cards worth 16, including salt, was made. It's a bum deal for this guy who thought he was getting a lot of points. Two papyrus, which would give him a huge score of points. Now, he got this spice, but that's not really helpful for him. He needed to turn these points in this turn, whereas the Assyrians got another little set. Um... They might be able to turn those two salt into something they can use, like a bigger set of cheap stuff, or a couple grain or something. We'll see how that works out. But that's not at all good for them. Well, maybe it didn't turn out too badly. They offered three cards hides worth nine to the Egyptians, who will give them three cards worth five, including a papyrus. So they get that papyrus set, and a bonus ochre, and they up the Egyptian value significantly as well, up to 525 points for the hides. I don't think either one's going to make their layer, but at least they're getting sets that they can turn in for something of some value here. And now, for the first time, we're seeing people actually buying stuff. Uh, the Egyptians were able to make their three colors. They have a set of four grain they were able to collect somehow, even though, uh, well, yeah, they did have a grain to begin with. So that's 64 bucks plus 11 more for uh, out of their treasury put them to 75 and that's enough money to get mysticism and pottery they're going to move forward this turn babylon was not so lucky they were able to get pottery they could have gotten mysticism instead they had uh, 32 uh, 36, 45 after they threw in some points. Which means they're going to be falling back a turn. And that's the, uh, that's the risk. You don't know how well you're going to trade. I'm not sure if these get reshuffled or not. Uh, let me see if anybody else is turning in. It looks like one other person's turning in here. Which is uh, the Assyrians also bought pottery. Now they don't need to move forward this time, but they want it because they look like they're doing well and there's a famine in play and they happen to have some grain in hand. I don't think the uh, Babylonians have any grain, but nobody is really sure of that. So maybe you want to target people without the pottery. All right, let me look up uh, whether or not it says to reshuffle those mixed trade cards or if they just get put in deterministically. Yeah, as I thought, they go in deterministically, which is kind of weird. I, I, I think when you add the advanced trade cards, they changed the rules and said you shuffle them. And to me, that added a negative aspect to the game. In fact, if you wanted to purify this game completely, you would stack the deck every other one with trade goods at the beginning of the game so that there's not even a shuffle at the beginning of the game. Okay, so now we have some disasters 
Uh, I'd better load this up and come back to them in a moment because I want to speak a little bit. Okay, let's take a look at these disasters. The first one we have to resolve is the volcanic eruption or earthquake. Well, again, I don't believe Thrace is sitting on a volcano. This is close. So they have to pick a city and demolish it. Um, they're going to pick this one. And they get three people in replacement so that they can knock out this Creighton city. And there's nothing Creek can do about this. <laughs> they just lost it. But they got the men back, so it, it's just reduced. It's not actually destroyed. Uh, reduced the component population. Eh. Uh, now, famine is more complicated. I don't remember the numbers on famine. But that's okay. That's one of the reasons we're looking at this. Get a nice little... Uh... So, Egypt is going to lose nine points of stuff. He has pottery, but no grain to show for it. Uh, you can turn in grains, or not turn in, but reveal grains if you have pottery, and they reduce that by four. So he's going to lose nine points of stuff, which he has to pick. Then he has 20 points of stuff, and people count as one, cities count as I think five and they're reduced to the space because if I'm not mistaken nope city's kind of six in this there's another one that just reduces things you can't reduce it beyond uh, beyond the amount of territory you have so here's a problem you have to worry about unsupported cities here if you have less cities uh, if you have less people, then you can support. So they have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people. They can support five cities. They're going to have to lose a city. Well, this is just ugly. This is the safest city for them to lose. So that's five points. It does. The player decides how any player with pottery may reduce. Yeah. There's something that reduces them, but you can't. Uh, you don't lose as much. So now he's only needs six pieces. What did I have? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've lost uh, six for my city. I think I can lose three and still be good. So that's one. Hmm. This is not pleasant no matter how you cut it. Two. Three. Yeah, let me keep something of a barrier. So that would be nine points, and I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. I could support all my cities. So these guys die. And I lose this city. But I made it over my hump. Which is the important thing. Okay, now I get 20 points to allocate to other people that they have to take. No more than 11 to any one person. Now, I'm not going to hit Babylon. Not only do they have pow, uh, pottery, but they're not moving forward. Who do I want to hit? Well, I sure the hell want to hit Africa, and I'm going to hit them with 11 points. And let's see. Who else do I think is doing really, really well? Assyria is on my border. I'm not sure they're doing terribly well. I like picking on them, though, because I'm used to how powerful they can be. Uh, I might piss them off by hitting them, though. Huh. I don't have to allocate the other points, and I'd be, you know, everybody would be thankful and nice to me, maybe. I've never seen that in a game. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to hit Assyria because they've been able to buy something. I think they're going to make their hump fairly easily. Of course, I think other people are going to make their humps fairly easily too, but this might interfere with them. So I'll hit them with nine. Um, I'll, I'll do the uh, points on... Oh, no, they have pottery. I don't want to hit them. All right. Um, So this is the question. I could probably knock Crete, who's kind of weak, for a loop here. 
or maybe Italy or something. Yeah, I'm going to hit Italy because they're coming up on their barrier. They haven't bought. Uh, they look kind of fragile. My plan is to push them back to make there be less uh, uh, people who are making it past the barrier as quickly as possible. So I'm going to hit them with nine. They're kind of in alignment with the Africans. I don't want to hit uh, the Assyrians because, A, they're close to me and can take some revenge on me, but also they have that pottery and I, I just don't trust that that's going to uh, work. Limit the amount of people who are in the running, as it were. All right, uh, so I'll hit Italy with nine. I'll come back after the damage is done. I was mistaken. Cities are only worth five. Uh, so I think I owe another point here. One, two, three. I've got another guy I can lose. I'll lose him. All right. Um, the problem for the... Uh, For the Africans, was there, that's 11 points, and I was hitting Italy with 9, i got to figure that one out. Alright, so here are my African losses, two cities, and one of these dudes, and the Italians lost a city, and two of these dudes, and both have enough points to support their remaining cities, I hope. I'm not sure about those Italians. Uh-oh, 2, 4, 5, 6, oh, they can't, uh-oh. Screwed up. So I had five, six, seven, eight, nine. It looks to me, I think I'm stuck having to do this though. Let me look. Well, there's no change given, that's certain. And it doesn't say that I can lose more anywhere that I can see. So I think I have to lose nine points and then reduce a city, which is the five that I took here. Six, seven, eight, nine. And now I'm in trouble because I have one, two, three, four cities and only enough to support three of them. So this city also gets reduced to two more people. I think that's the correct way of playing it. Uh, been a long time, but that's what I recall. Well. These, uh, disaster, uh-oh, person who's got the lowest number, nobody turned in salt. That's going to go away. This actually went under the deck first on the two deck, but that means we have a guaranteed calamity. And we have one not too far down here. We have the nasty civil war coming. So this game, it's hard to avoid these, but we can see, I don't know if you're allowed to paw through, but if we were counting or whatever, we'd know one more card down, the second guy to get a, a level four uh, commodity is going to get a civil war, which is another very bad one. Um, maybe the worst of the pile. It creates somebody else's stuff in your territory. Italy was definitely badly hit by uh, that famine, though. Africa, well, they're not in the position to challenge Egypt quite how they used to be. All right, now let's look at what else we have. Uh, the only thing remaining in the game, I believe, is moving forward. And nobody's out of cities, so everybody moves forward, except at the barrier. Babylon does not. They don't have three colors, but Egypt does. And already Babylon's fallen behind. If this was the full trade set, I could guarantee that they will not win the game. I can't do that here. Because I think these barriers become harder with the limited trade set, uh, without the expansion. That's my theory, at least. Someone may still make it by running completely through. But, eh, with the expanded trade set, nearly everyone made it by running through. There are, of course, ways of ganging up on someone and destroying their cities, etc. If you knock them down into the... if you nuke them, basically, if you kill all their cities, they go back a space instead of advancing, no matter what kind of uh, civilization cards they have, etc. That very seldomly happened in games I saw, and I think it's very, very difficult. Um, I've played a lot of this and seen people try to wipe someone out. It's pretty damn tough. All right. 
mainly because the people who have the least st least dudes on the board move last. Well, they're the ones least able to damage anyone. All right. Uh, I guess up this guy.